how do you think your kids would turn out if they didn't have to go to classes, or if they didn't have to do homework, didn't get grades, weren't forced to do exams, and were allowed to mix with people of all ages? Well, they might turn out like me. My parents set up a self-directed school in Montana when I was six, and I'm 15 now. I went to a traditional school before that. They'd become annoyed with the school system they were educators in. One time, when I was five, and attending a traditional school in Belgium, my grandma came to visit, and I spent some really fun days with her. It's when I came back to school and had to catch up with worksheets and miss PE and recess that my parents decided it wasn't for us. That was the last straw on their journey as teachers and administrators in the traditional system. There are people all over the world who experience a kind of freedom and trust commonly known as unschooling. Unschooling allows kids to choose what they want to learn. There are schools and centers set up for this, as well as local cooperatives and home unschooling. Across the world, people have turned to unschooling as the approach they see as most beneficial and natural for learning. We know that humans learn best when we're interested in what we're learning. This is not debatable, it's how we're wired to learn. As Daniel Pink wrote, learning is at its best when it's self-motivated and self-directed. Intrinsic motivation, the drive to learn something because it's interesting, enjoyable, or personally meaningful is essential for deep, long-term understanding and retention. So, what does a typical day look like at my school? Well, every day is different, but you might walk in and see people reading, playing chess, baking, or designing video games. Everyone's free to do what interests them, so there will be many different activities, games, classes, and projects going on. What's important is that everyone is pursuing what interests them, and no adult is telling them what's important to learn. Why, when there are millions of things I can be interested in, should I be limited to such a small number of subjects that someone else has decided are important? I love this approach because I can pursue my own interests and have a say in how my community is run and organized. I'm able to discuss all kinds of interesting topics and ideas with people of all ages, and I get to mix with people who have genuine interests, which excites me to try things as well. We also have visitors coming in, too, who we call inspirers, who share their stories and areas of expertise. Children and adults hold positions of responsibility, of which I've been community meeting chair, a peace and justice clerk, a mediator, and a chore clerk. These are all positions which help the school to run on a daily basis, and in most traditional schools, only adults fill these roles. One of the ways I contribute to our community is to be on committees. One committee I'm on is the admissions committee, where we talk about students who have been doing their visiting week and whether they can join our community. Then we meet with them and their parents at the end of the week to let them know if they're admitted. I thought I'd share some of the most common questions that come up in these discussions. What if they don't learn math, English, science, etc.? It's true that in order to navigate the world, we all need to know how to read and write and have some knowledge of math. But there are so many things you could want to know about in the world. Who's to say what you should learn without excluding other important things? There are examples of kids, when they're really motivated, completing five years of math in one year. Really wanting to do it is the key. What we do learn at schools like these is how to learn and the confidence in ourselves to access what we want to learn in the future. Another question that gets asked is, if my child isn't being forced to learn things, how will they learn to commit to something? We need to remember that commitment comes in many forms. Instead of forced, it may be best to say encouraged. An example of this is our school shows. If someone has been given a part and is involved with the show, they will see the benefits of the commitment when they feel the success of putting on the show. Also, you're not going to be committed to something if you're being forced to do it. You're definitely not being intrinsically motivated. Another question is, how will my child discover what they're interested in if they don't go to any classes? 
we're probably exposed to just as many, if not more, options because there are so many people doing different things and inspirers coming in as well. And the last question is, will my child be able to get into college? There's been many books and papers written about this, but the short answer is yes. It's been proven that colleges care more about interesting, passionate people rather than grades. In fact, professors have remarked that students who have been in unschooled, democratic environments feel confident in advocating for themselves and can maneuver much more easily in college because they're comfortable in mixed-age environments and are used to the freedoms that most people only start to experience after age 18. So, what am I interested in after years of being allowed to de decide for myself? I was never forced to read. I waited until I was ready, which was around the age of nine. In fact, my dad tried to get me to sit down and read basic reader books with him when I was six, but that only turned me off for a while. I now have a real love for reading and can spend as much time on that as I like, every day. I have a passion for all things theater, particularly singing, acting, and dance. I have time to pursue these interests for as long as I want as well. For some people, what I've been talking about may seem scary or strange, and I understand that. Traditional schools have been the norm for most of you throughout your lives, and often it's daunting to consider something else. It takes 10,000 hours to master a skill when we're given the time to pursue it. So, for example, my learning can continue at home. Instead of mindless homework, I can do singing lessons, piano lessons, practicing singing and acting, language practice, reading, and exercising. I don't always want to practice, but because I see it as important to my interests, I understand why I have to do it. Carrie MacDonald said in her book, not only do we need to unschool our own thinking, but we need to help others to do the same and to show compassion when they might not yet understand. Unschooling disrupts everything we've been taught about learning and knowing. It's bound to cause confusion. It's exciting to know there are so many options out there for your children. With all of the technological advances happening right now, schooling should be adapting. In a world where technology will play an increasingly important role, it's going to require a different set of skills, such as critical thinking, creativity, adaptability, and communication in order for us to be successful. My education journey is unique to me. But what is important is finding the best way of learning for each person so we can have the best chances in a rapidly changing world.